This is Paul. Today we're going to be looking at Yahoo Finance and how to use it. So this is the front page of Yahoo Finance. You can see there's quite a lot of stuff on here. The top three up here are the big signatures of the stock market. They, the amount they go up and down is generally how well the market is doing in general. Um, here we have some news articles just about the market in general, some major things that are going on with major companies etc. You can look at these when you first get on here. They have some interesting articles usually. All right, now let's get started on the stocks over here. Now, right here you have your watch list. Your watch list includes all the stocks that you look up usually and they will, every time you look up a new one, it comes up to the top of the list. So this is very useful so you don't have to keep typing in stocks every time you want to go look at one you've already looked at. All right, so now Good thing about the quote lookup is you don't have to necessarily put in the ticker symbol. If you don't know the ticker symbol, you can search up the name of the company instead. So for example, I want to, I might not know what the Facebook ticker symbol is, so I'm going to type in Facebook, and voila, Facebook right here. So we click on Facebook, and here we are on the Facebook page. So, did pretty well today, went up 1.59%, which is relatively, actually, pretty good for a single day. And the price of one share of Facebook is $132.07. Now, this is over the course of five days, how well the stock has been doing on the chart. And this is for a single day, this is how it did today. And we can also go to, in terms of years, we can even go to max since Facebook was uh, went public, which is May 14th, 2012, and how it's been doing since then. And pretty much it's just been running straight up. Yeah, Facebook is a pretty good company. Um... So let's start up here. So first we have summary, conversation, statistics, profile, financials, options, holders, historical data, and analysts. Now the main ones you're going to be really caring about are the statistics, the financials, and maybe the profile. Those are the three major ones you're going to be caring about. When you get a little more into research, you can go into options, holders, historical data, and analysts. But for now, you can just care. These are the three main ones you're going to be caring about. So. I'll get into those in one second. Now let's go into this whiteboard right here. So we have the opening price, which is the price that it opened up at 9.30 a.m. Um, the closing price, which it ended, previous closing price, so what it ended up on Thursday, the previous day. And these are going to be constantly changing, so you really don't have to worry about these. This is just how much people are wanting to buy or wanting to sell. You know, keep changing. See, just 500 shares, 300 shares. And one day, you can have up to 18, 17 million shares traded in one day, so this really is nothing. Um, this is the price range for the day, price range for one year, and then this is the one-year target estimate. So this is what analysts are estimating the price of the stock will be within one year. Here's the market capital. This is very, very high for a stock, 379 billion. That is one of the that is really up there. It's a large capital stock. Now here we have price to earnings ratio. Now the average stock has a price to earnings ratio of 15. Usually if you go higher than that, the stock is overvalued. Now, because Facebook is still growing, it can maintain such a high PE. Now, price to earnings ratio is the price of the stock divided by the earnings over four quarters. And that is what the PE will be. So for extremely high PE stocks, you want to look into them first and make sure that you're that they're able to sustain that high PE before you go into them. Otherwise, if their PE is below 15, usually you're getting a pretty good deal. Not always. Beta, you can look that up. It's not too important. Um, these are the volumes every day. Now, Facebook does not have a dividend in yield. Let's go to a stock that does. For example, Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola here, as we can see, has a yield of $1.40. It will, over the course of four quarters, it will give you a total of $1.40 for every share you have. So if you have 100 shares, then you get $140 a year. Yeah, let's go back to Facebook. Facebook, as we can see, has an earnings date. The next time it's going to announce its quarterly earnings. Nope. Give it a second. Here we go. Is no C over here in the earnings. The white circles are the estimated earnings, the yellow are what the company actually made that quarter. So third quarter, fourth quarter, 2015, these are the estimates and the actual things. As you can see, Facebook has been beating all the earnings estimations, which is very, very good. 
and in third quarter, which is going to be on November 2nd, we're going to see how well it does. If it beats it again, I can guarantee you the price will go up. If it doesn't, the price will definitely go down. Depending on the company, this can this up and down process can be up to 5 to 10% gain or loss on earnings dates. These are just the general financials, the revenue and the profit. Each year, it's, the profit's been slowly increasing. The revenue has been skyrocketing, as we can see. Um, these are recommendation trends, what analysts are analyzing the stock as. So we see right here, 17 think you should really, really buy it. 27 think you should buy it. A uh, small amount think you should hold it, and barely anybody says you should maybe sell it. And nobody says you should definitely sell it. So right now, this has a pretty good rating, recommendation rating of 1.8. The more, this has a um, 49 analysts analyzing this. The more analysts you have, the better. That means there's a wider range of people looking at the stock and from a lot of different views. And this average here is going to be more and more accurate with the more people you have. If you only have like 5, 10 analysts, then you want to do more research yourself. And then this is the price target, as we can see up here when you're price target and this is just the range of price targets that different analysts have given somebody said it might be 80 someone might say it'd be 185 by the end of the year and this is where currently is that's the average and these are just upgrades and downgrades that company give it once in a while it's been downgraded twice upgraded these are the dates usually if a company gets upgraded or downgraded that day the stock will either go up or down depending on if it's an upgrade or downgrade now let's go to some of these so let's start with statistics now, I'm not going to go through every single one of these statistics because that would take way too long, but these are very good statistics. Some of these to look at, especially the ones in here, the valuation measures, you can look these up on Investopedia and see what they mean, and you can make very informed decisions on buying or selling stocks. You go to the profile now. The profile is just the general information about the company, who's the CEO, which is Mark Zuckerberg, as we all know, um, how many employees it has, what the company actually does. The whole description is right here. Now for financials, if you've taken accounting, this shouldn't be too hard to analyze. Otherwise, you can just look at this stuff. I mean, it's pretty general, gross profit, operating expenses. I've taken accounting, so it's all pretty easy. And some of these you might just want to look up really quick, but they generally, you can just infer what they mean and you can tell if the company's doing well. As we can see from 2013 to 2015, the Net income applicable to common shareholders, us, has increased, which is good. All right. And then the final part, which is very important. These articles tell you about things that are going on with the company. As you can see, these different articles, Fox Bell, Sony Pictures, that involves Facebook somehow. Sometimes it's just if their name is listed in the article, they'll be in there, even though if they're not an important part of it. Uh, here go Google Tops web traffic list followed by Yahoo and Facebook. All right, and this might be an interesting article. Or Mark Zuckerberg makes 1.6 billion in a week, so we can look at that. And then this takes us to Forbes. Often linked to other websites, but don't worry, these websites aren't bad websites. They won't give you viruses or anything. These are official websites with good articles. Yahoo Finance won't do that to you. And you can read these articles. They have interesting stuff. All right, that is the general idea of how Yahoo Finance works. Explore it more yourself, and you will find that it has a lot more to offer than what I've just said. Thank you.